Welcome everyone. We are with the best bike, in my opinion, that is made out there in the world. Probably, I'm a little biased. But anyway, I'm here with Corey. We're at San Jose BMW. And we've got, this is a 2022, right? 2022. 2022 uh, R1250 GSA. This is the lowered model, which is fantastic of BMW to recognize that they have a lot of different riders out there. Uh, both tall and short. I like to think I'm somewhere in between. But uh, Corey, what can you tell us about the new 2022, or for that matter, some of the features of this GSA? This is the 40-year uh, anniversary model, so it replicates the 40 years that BMW has been doing the adventure models, and it comes in this classic yellow and black motif that they originally came out in. So it's pretty styly. Um, this one has the, every 40 year anniversary model, the colorway we've got in has had this 719 billet uh, valve cover package on it. Solid billet carved into a valve cover, beautifully anodized in black with this, the silver machining on it. And I thought this was like a cover at first, but no, this is the this is engine the, cover. This is the yeah, actual valve that, cover that is That is great looking. Um, in 2021, um, one of the, the updates that the, <clears throat> that the GS line came with is an adaptive headlight. So the headlight changes direction when you're changing direction. And it also has heated grips as well as now a new heated seat. So this particular one has the low seat option on it and it is not heated. How many different seats? There's what, probably like so you three have a, or so? You have a, um, the, the conventional, the standard yeah. GS adventure seat. You have the low seat. You have the comfort seat, you have the heated seat, you have the bench seat, you have a low bench seat and a standard height bench seat. <laughs> it's a lot so of they, options. So they make a couple different options. Um, the, the GS uh, lineup, the GS standard and the GSAs have an adjustable seat height of about an inch. Th combine the suspension, this is one inch less suspension than the standard height, plus the seat's about two inches lower than the standard GSA seat. Okay. So it drops it down to about 31 and a half, I would say probably is the seat height on this. Yeah. About 5'10", 31 inseam. And right now, just with sneakers, as a demonstration, you can see I'm pretty much flat footing uh, on this GSA. And, uh, you know, very comfortable. Not to say you have to flat foot. I think sometimes uh, people get too concerned about that. Yep. But, um, you know, big bike definitely gives you all the confidence in the world being yep. able to do that. And then, you know, these, of course, have all the whistles and bells. Mm -hmm. uh, you can adjust the ride height. Yeah, it has the electronic suspension adjustment. So at the push of a button when you're going down the road, um, if you're just riding on the freeway, you can have it in the road mode, which is a, a light dampening in the compression and rebound. It's pretty free flowing and floaty. Um, and then you can go to the dynamic mode just by tapping the suspension button and it will give it a lot more compression and rebound dampening. It also has a spring preload adjustment. So you have a minimum mode, which is no spring preload, a maximum mode, which is all the spring preload that the, the, the shot can have. And then it has an auto mode, which basically takes a measure of, of the weight that's riding on the bike, whether it's a full tank of gas, whether it's two people oh, or one wow. person or the saddlebags, and it will adjust to between about 45 and 50 millimeters of sag um, with whatever weight is on it. So it'll add or take away preload as you're riding. Okay, yeah. It's got the cruise control. Cruise control, And yep. then I also noticed, you know, I have a 2019 and I noticed the 2022 now has a, uh, is an economy mode? They give you like a green bar for fuel savings? So they have an echo mode. And what oh, that okay. does was the 1250 GS has a shift cam motor, right? Yep. Shift cam, unlike the VTEC and Honda, is not RPM dependent. It's throttle dependent. So mm -hmm. you can move it over to the, the high performance cam just by giving it over quarter throttle. Okay. Um, if you're riding on the freeway at 75 miles an hour and you're light up on the throttle, <clears throat> it's gonna be in the lower, lower performance cam profile, which is gonna give it better fuel economy and better low RPM throttle response. Yeah. <clears throat> When you have it in the echo mode, it holds it longer into the, the lower oh, mode, yeah. 
and it gives you a bar graph on here, um, kind of like a Prius. It kind of shows <laughs> yeah, you yeah. like if you're on the gas, the green bar is going to disappear. If you're off the gas, it'll get bigger. So if you can leave, keep it the the, the more green, it's going to give you better fuel economy. With this uh, with this newer motor, the 1250, mm -hmm. one thing I noticed, and I th I think I understand it right, but I'm curious to hear from you. If I do a slow roll on, like I'm at three or four thousand RPM, and I do a slow roll on, I can hear a pop. So you'll hear that pop right at about, it's about 47, 4,800 okay. RPM. So if you're off the gas and it's less than quarter throttle and you're doing say 46 or 700 RPM, if you roll that on just past quarter, that moves the shift cam over and that's when you hear that pop. Oh, Cause okay. that's right at the RPM where if um, it's at a certain RPM, like over 4,800, whether you're you're um, on the gas or not, it, it's still gonna move it over at that point in time. Yeah, yeah, and I, I have an aftermarket pipe, yeah, so, so I feel like noticeable. it's that much more louder. Yeah. And it has road mode, rain mode, dynamic, dynamic pro, enduro and enduro pro mode as well. Right, yeah, and if I'm not mistaken, they went away from the chip underneath no the chip. seat, right? No chip, You right. just go into the menus and yeah. you grab it there. Yeah. One thing I noticed, it has a USB. Mm -hmm. So you're able to plug your phone in or whatever your accessory might be right yep, away. Yes. You don't need like another dongle. Right. I also noticed, I think there's a, another plug-in back here. So that's a DIN, D-I-N port. And on, at San Jose BMW, we put a um, SAE or battery tender lead on all of our bikes here as well. So oh, that's you, a can, nice one. you can either um, Plug the accessory socket, it goes to SAE to coax for a heated jacket or your passenger or whatever. Tell us about the front suspension. So BMW has designed this, patented this, and it's been kind of the staple of the BMW adventure market for the last decade. This is called the tail lever suspension. Basically, with this front swing arm right here, the shock and the dampening unit is back there and the forks are just guides for the handlebars to the front connect the front axle. What that does is it separates braking and steering. Unlike most motorcycles, when you roll this thing forward and you hit the brakes, the front suspension will dive. With the tail lever suspension, it does not. It separates that, yet it's still super plush. Think about this. If you're going 50 miles an hour and you're hard on the brakes with the bike with let's just say eight inches of suspension travel under hard braking you would probably only have three inches of suspension travel left so there's there's not much on this bike hard braking at say 60 miles an hour with eight inches of suspension you'll still have at least seven inches of of suspension travel which isn't bound up at all also they can use a narrower smaller diameter fork tube which enables the steering to turn farther before it hits lock without interfering the upper fork tubes on the frame. So that gives the GS an extra tight turning radius and makes them just feel very, very good on the road um, as far as the rigidity with the front end under hard braking as well as being super nimble off-road. So uh, we'll wrap up this portion okay. and then we'll, we'll dive into some menu stuff. Right. So cool. we'll see ya. All right.